Oh my gosh, look at all this stuff we packed. Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we've got something truly special in store for you. A journey to the stunning paradise of Bimini, Bahamas. I will be giving information based on several unforgettable trips we've taken to Bimini. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. I hope you enjoy it. Now let's get to it. Have you heard other people talk about how awesome the fishing is in the Bahamas? Or how clear and gorgeous the water is? Or maybe you just want some of Bimini's famous conch. Not sure where to stay? We have stayed on the South Island and the North Island. Both are great places, but have many differences. We have made two unforgettable trips to this part of the Bahamas. So I'll share our experience at this far western edge of the Bermuda Triangle. I'll go over how we got to this small island, traveling by air and by sea, where we stayed, the many fun adventures we had at sea, great places to go on the island, and at the end, I will compare the locations we stayed and which place we enjoyed more. Bimini is a tropical haven that's just 40 miles from Miami, Florida. The first year we went to the Bahamas, we drove up US-1 up to mainland Florida, where we flew a seaplane with Tropic Airways out of Fort Lauderdale. There is no security line to worry about, which is nice, so we hopped on the plane for a quick 20-minute flight. The views from above are amazing. When you get close to the Bahamas, you instantly notice the clarity and vibrant color change of the water. I was exhausted from packing, but I was not going to sleep through this flight. Since all of us flew, our friends had hired a captain that drove their boat to the Bahamas and it was waiting for us when we landed. This is gonna be so oh my gosh, it's so clear. <laughs> <laughs> the plane landed at Bimini Seaplane Base where we walked from the dock straight to the customs office. We landed on North Bimini Island, but we had booked a place on Bimini South Island. So we took a five minute ferry across the channel to the other island. Bimini Sands is great because you literally drive straight out to the ocean and you're in deep water within five or ten minutes. There's also a nice beach, a marina where you can get gas and ice. and you can see your boat from your room. All of the marina here are floating docks, which makes it easy to tie up your boat and not have to worry about the tides. Flying on a seaplane was a great experience, but the second year around, we drove both of our boats over to Bimini. And there's nothing better than having your own boat in another country. The Straits of Florida can be rough, so it's important to cross on a good weather day when the wind and wave heights are low. We left at first light on a Wednesday morning when the water was flat. The trip was about 150 miles. Our boat cruises around 32 miles per hour, so the trip was about seven hours total. And of course, we had a fishing pole ready, so we stopped a few times along the way when we saw something in the water. We left Kajo and followed the Keys east. So we passed Marathon and made our way to Tavernier, which is where we refueled at Tavernier Creek Marina. From there, we did a heading straight to Bimini. Once we made it to the Bahamas and got to the channel in Bimini, we made sure to have a courtesy flag and a quarantine flag. We didn't have a yellow quarantine flag, but anything yellow that can be seen works fine. We made our way to Bimini Big Game Club, which is where you can clear customs if you arrive by boat. 
This time around, we booked a house on Bimini North at Resorts World. Resorts World is a Hilton, and we did stay a few days in the hotel resort since we arrived early, and the hotel was really nice. There's a few restaurants, plenty of pools, and a casino. The house we rented was right across the canal from the resort, so we still had access to most of the hotel amenities. This was a big plus because the year before, there really wasn't any place to eat. There was a pizza place called the Thirsty Turtle and a tiny convenience store, and that was about it. So if we were too exhausted to cook from all the awesome adventures we did during the day, then dinner was a short walk from the house. Speaking of food, you have to eat some fresh conch when you're there. We must have tried conch at every place we went, but our favorite place was Joe's. It's a little Caribbean conch shack. There's beer, of course, and we had to get some Bahamas Goombe punch while we were there. The must-do activities for us is always fishing and diving. We had a ton of fun deep dropping. The first year we went had a lot more rainfall. Some days were windy too, but we didn't let that stop us. We had our raincoats ready and still did some fishing in rougher seas. We caught a lot of yellow eye snapper, got some clean snappers. We double hooked some fish deep dropping a few times. That's a little yellow Did it? That's a big one. Did it yellow fish? Oh, wow. Also got some palm fruit, which are sea monsters. Oh, my God. <laughs> got some black snappers and good sized mystic groupers. 12.3 to 5. <laughs> Bimini is also a great place to troll for Wahoo. You can watch more on how we caught Wahoo in a previous video I uploaded. But you never know what you're gonna catch when you're there. We found some bait and caught a queen trigger fish. He's pretty beefy too. Chris also got a ghost shark deep dropping, which was not expected at all. The recognizable Sapona wreck is a must see. It won't be intact forever and it's not in great condition, but there was a ladder on the wreck when we were there. So if you're brave, then you can climb to the top and jump off. And when you're in the big game fishing capital of the world, you have to spend some time at Bimini Big Game. It's a resort and a marina. Some of the greats like Hemingway have spent a lot of time here. It's a great place to grab lunch or book your vacation. And of course you can't forget about Bimini Road. We dove the elusive square-shaped stones that form what has been called the road to the lost city of Atlantis. A once in a lifetime dive to do is with Neil Watson's Bimini Scuba Center, where you can dive with the great hammerhead. The hammerheads are around in the winter months, from what I was told, so I don't think you would see them in the summer. It's an easy dive in that it's shallow. A more relaxing adventure we did was petting the stingrays at Honeymoon Harbor. There's a gorgeous beach, of course, and you can get up close with the stingrays and their shark. <laughs> the most adventurous excursion we did would have to be going to a deserted island and climbing a 150-foot tall lighthouse that was built about 170 years ago. Opening the hatch to death. Good lord, guys. Oh my lord. 
Great Isaac K is a really cool experience. The lighthouse keeper's house, cistern, and other buildings are deteriorating, but it was interesting to see. This is pretty fun. There is some good snorkeling around the entire island. We found the mast of a recent sailboat that was on the bottom. There are lots of turtles and you can look for conch shells. We also dove a small barge that was sunk next to the island. I couldn't find any information on this. It looked like it was towed behind a boat since it was just a platform. Or it could have been a floating dock tied to the island at some point so it was easier to drop off supplies to the lighthouse keepers. The lighthouse keepers were all by themselves out here and didn't have much attachment to the outside world. Or maybe I'm completely wrong. Let me know what you think in the comments. Both years we had a blast. If I were to decide where to stay again, I would definitely choose Resorts World on Bimini Island North. There's a lot more to do, more restaurants and stores to get groceries within walking distance. And there's no bugs. We could sit on the patio in the mornings and have coffee or have drinks in the evening and not worry about mosquitoes or no see -ems. Bimini South must not spray for mosquitoes because when the sun started to go down and we were coming in from fishing, we would all be running to get inside. Now we went in November both years, so maybe it's different in the summer, but this was just our experience. I recommend visiting Bimini to anyone who loves ocean activities or eating fresh conch on the beach. If you've been to Bimini, share your favorite excursions and experience in the comments below. We'd love to hear them. And if you're planning your own trip or have any questions, feel free to ask. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and see you next time.